Now, before I start making fun of this hundred-ish dollar PC I bought off of Amazon, I do want to clarify, the seller didn't actually list it as a gaming PC, they just had gaming as one of its use cases, for whatever that's worth. Oh, and also, ad. Today's video sponsor is the sponsor I'd most likely share custody of a Labrador with, Linode. And just like the Labrador we're getting together, Linode is a dependable Linux-based cloud computing and web hosting service. Linode offers a whole host of linux -y core services like storage solutions, cloud computing, to database management and networking. Linode even has a new startup program called Rise that'll help you establish easy cloud infrastructure so you can get your startup that's gonna revolutionize spelunking off the ground. If that sounds good to you, use the link below to get a 60-day $100 free credit for Linode. I've ever had a computer delivered to me in a bag before, so that's an exciting first. Ugh. Wow, that did not work. If only there was some kind of clear instruction as to how to open the bag, that really would help. Oh, I love the Terry thing. Oh, it's, it's called the Thinty. Other than the beautiful Intel Effect branding, there's not a whole lot on the box. It's called the Thinty T4 Pro. Pro presumably standing for prostate, because I can't imagine you using one of these professionally for anything. Which on that note, in terms of specs, has an Intel Apollo Lake series processor in it, a frankly massive four gigs of memory. It comes with 64 gigs of storage. Now it doesn't specify, but considering the price point, I'm assuming this is some poopy EMMC storage, but we'll figure that out soon enough. And finally, it does also come with an adapter. Very nice. Oh. On top, we have our user manual, again with Intel Effect branding on it. And then under that, I'm guessing that's our little thin tea. That was maybe a, a bit of a stupid complaint, but the lip that you use to pull the thin tea up is kind of short and hard to grasp. So it's, it's not as comfy as it should be to pull the system out. See, look at that. Uh, oops. Oh, and then it tears. There's a poor, poor box showing right there. Uh, so this is the thin tea, which is smaller than I was expecting, actually. But under here, we have our adapter. Look at that. And as you can see by the specs of the adapter, we got ourselves a seriously powerful gaming system for about $100. And it comes with an HDMI cable, which honestly not many pre-built systems come with an HDMI cable, so that's pretty good little thinty. And then finally we have the system itself, which again is just tiny. Wow, the Thinty looks more like a Kirkland brand Chromecast than a PC. Now in terms of I.O., this thing's pretty badass. We've got two USB 3 ports on the back with a microphone headphone jack and relatively lame power button. And then on the right side, we've got some ventilation to cool the power housed inside and another USB 3 port. On the left, aside from more ventilation, we've got a CMOS reset button, cool. And then around the back, we've got a physical ethernet port, which is great, another USB port and two HDMI ports. This $100 IO puts any Apple product to shame. Oh, actually the bottom of it's also quite exciting. We've got two what looks like quarter 20 threads so you can mount it to stuff and there's some grip tape so it doesn't slip around on your table. Oh, it works well. And with that, considering that this looks like the kind of thing I may break in the process of opening it, we're gonna have to jump to the future after the testing to open it up. So I just finished the testing and the results were frankly astonishing. This <laughs> is the only, only accurate word for it really. Looking at the bottom, I'm thinking that uh, if there are screws, they're hidden under the kind of grip here. Oh, that is glue that is having to be destroyed there. Hey, I predicted correctly, as the genius that I am, that there are actually screws under that tape. Just do that. Very easy. Oh, that's all so cute. We've got a little laptop style blower fan 
And then over here we have the CMOS battery. And then under this bit of Emo tape, I think is the heatsink that cools the behemoth Celeron. Just tear that off. Moves our fan. It uses Samsung memory modules, very fancy. And next to that is the Wi-Fi card. Oh. Generally, as far as heat sinks go, this is quite an insubstantial bit of, of, of cooling. But combined with the fan, for the Celeron that's in here, this is actually kind of overkill. But we'll see later when we do some gaming on it. And under that, we have our tiny little Celeron die, which, considering that that is the only thing that does processing, that's our CPU and our graphics card, just in that little bit over there. Oh! On the back, we've got some of the beefiest power delivery I've ever seen. I'm, I'm actually worried about roid rage with these bad boys. And in this module, in close proximity of being brutalized by the power delivery, is the gross 64 gigs of eMMC storage. And the last thing I noticed down here is the CMOS button, which you can actually access through the chassis. Neat. So that is what the inside of a $100 PC for gaming off of Amazon looks like. And as you can see, we've got some monumentally powerful hardware in here. Uh, so let, let's see how it all runs games. Like it says it very much should be able to. Power cable is not very long. Windows 10, so it's been in a warehouse for a while, although I'm not complaining. Now this is a system by a relatively small manufacturer, so I am betting we are gonna have basically no venereal disease on here. It's just the Windows 10 venereal disease on here, and nothing more than that, which is, is great. I'm always excited to see that. Ooh, the CPU's having a rough time. 100% utilization, idle on the desktop's never good. Uh, although it's its first boot, you know? It's trying to find its bearings and whatever, so hopefully it'll settle down soon. Now the CPU in question that's having a bit of a struggle is a Celeron N3350. And that's the kind of thing you normally find in Chromebooks, so I guess it's not that surprising that it's struggling with Windows 10 so much. But it runs at a base speed of 1.1 GHz, which is plenty for gaming, I can imagine. Luckily, the massive 4 gigs of RAM is not full. So now what I'm gonna do is plug some internet into it and then give it a while to sort itself out so that hopefully we, we don't sit at 100% CPU utilization on the desktop and then I'll do some gaming on it. Okay, it's finally time for the ritualistic torture of the little mini PC. How is it still loading? It's been ages. Oh, I love it when this happens to GTA 5. When you can like see this stuff rendering in, that's when you know that you've got some peak GTA 5 gaming experience. And um, it's, it's, it's four frames per second. And actually, I think you normally get a higher frame rate in the house. So let's see what happens when we leave. Oh, yes. Very, very good gaming happening here. Now, the thing about the really low frame rate is that it does kind of slow the gaming experience down a little bit. You know, it gives you time to savor what's happening because you're not being rushed by a frame rate that makes sense. Nice, that's helped a lot. Uh, it has, in fact, about doubled our frame rate, which makes sense considering the resolution change. Hey, we're almost getting 10 frames. Oh, we've gotten over 10 frames per second now. Did it crash? Is it? No, no, it just, I don't know what happened there, but we're, <laughs> we're back. We're back. It's running again. Oh, very nice GTA 5 experience. <laughs> I love how even though it's barely rendering any of the map, it didn't change the frame rate at all. <laughs> it doesn't... I mean, one thing I will say, the frame pacing is immaculate. Like, look at how flat that graph is. That's beautiful. 
very consistent seven frames per second we have there. 720p, we're getting about 12 frames per second. The seller was right, this is great for gaming. Oh, oh no, even Bioshock is not doing very well. Oh, never mind, in this whole city shot, we're getting about 18 frames per second. Hey, over 30 frames per second. This is the closest to having a game actually run that we've seen so far. Okay, now it may still feel like you're playing a game on your grandma's PC, but it's kind of playable. Uh, and we can actually drop the resolution further, all the way down to 640 by 480. It still doesn't feel amazing. There is definitely a bit of input lagginess. Yeah, this is not a great experience at all, but it's usable. That's cool. That's actually kind of exciting that it, it more or less works a little bit, I guess, kind of. <laughs> not a very good Half-Life 2 performance. It is at 1080p, but we are inside and it's all at low settings and it's Half-Life 2, and we're not getting 300 frames per second, so this thing is, is really weak. A and outside, we're at like 29. Ooh wee, that is not amazing. Uh, let's drop it to 720p, which I don't think I've ever had to do <laughs> before. When we have buildings and stuff in this shot, it still drops below 40. That's crazy. What happens when we crank the settings? We're even gonna put some anti-aliasing on. When we turn to a bit with stuff in the shot, we're in the mid-teens. Wow, this is a loser-ass little PC. Next, I tried some emulation on the little system. It was fine with PS1 games like Crash Bandicoot, but PS2 games like God of War really curb stomped the little system. Hey, there we go. We're getting some combat to happen. Look at that. <laughs> And finally, I tried to run some Cinebench R20 on the hundred-ish dollar PC, which went well. Now, to put into perspective just how pathetically meek this little system is, Cinebench R20 has been running for 45 minutes now, and it's not even almost done yet. The craziest part is, it's the multi-core test. It isn't even the single-core one. So it took the little PC pretty much exactly an hour to finish a multi-threaded Cinebench run. And we got a quite frankly astounding 81 points. Now the past couple of days of just waiting for the system to do things may have been one of the more frustratingly slow experiences I've had in ages. When all is said and done, I guess if your standards are low enough, we did technically manage to play some games on it, so... Five stars?